Hello, this is Bunting, and this video is all about the art of the wub, specifically in the style of Dirt Monkey, but I'll also show some general techniques to create any wub your heart could possibly desire from scratch. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the wubs there. If you want to gain instant access to all the presets I've made here, plus this entire project file, that is posted on the Patreon along with all the others from all my videos. If you'd like to support me there, that'll be in the description, along with a link to a pre-save for my song dropping this Friday. If you like my tunes, be on the lookout. One more thing, this wouldn't be a YouTube video without me politely asking for your like, comment, and subscription because that just helps me out, I guess, who knows? Chit chat aside, the question remains, how does one master the art of Wobology? And to do that, I'm gonna get this initialized patch of vital and show you everything you can do to create your own custom Wob. Then I'll show all the presets, so don't worry about that. So the first thing, what is a Wob? Who knows, uh, this cutoff though makes it Wob, so. Any sound that Wobs is usually getting it from a low pass filter with this cutoff automating. And we could do that just with this LFO here. And boom. And for our first level of customization, we can tweak how this filter is. So resonance, it's going to be squelchy, or not squelchy, high-low. right? Another uh, prominent effect would be to lower this filter amount, this uh, LFO amount. So it gets a bit of a deeper wub, not fully opening. Or you can shift it up. Just have a bit of a shallower but mid-ranged wub. One more thing you can do is make this slope steeper. See, it gives you a bit of a cleaner wub versus letting more high end through. It's all personal preference. Be sure to really experiment with these. But that's just our filter. With this LFO, we can shape our wub to our liking. We can make it a bit snappier, a bit slower. We can make it a bit rounder and fuller. And we can even get fancy with it. So we'll have one round one here, and then two kind of more shallow ones hitting different. And not only is that an interesting rhythm, but it hitting the diff different peaks here gives it a slightly different tone each time it hits. It's just more interesting movement. That's not even the fun part, though. The fun part is selecting some shapes from here. Of course, we can have basic shapes, you know, all that normal stuff. But just grabbing a wavetable can easily get you an interesting result. Lots of nice harmonics in this already. And the great thing about wubs is it's super easy just to slap this LFO on anything for extra moving. Oh, that's, that's interesting. And then to further customize this, you know, feel free to use these warp modes shipped around the timbre. I'll refrain from that though. And of course, you have all these lovely modes here. I will dive into a bit of FM though with the second oscillator. Now there's a few things to do with the second oscillator. First of all, you want it routed through the filter so it actually wubs, that'd be nice. But one thing I like to do, and you hear Dirt Monkey do a lot, is pitch it up. I'm holding shift, clicking up, transposing it up a few octaves. And then we can move it up a fifth. So if we count seven steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirty-one. That's a sound you'll hear a lot, and if we get a wavetable, it'll sound a lot more familiar. It's that classic harmonic whistly sound, and it's so versatile, it's lovely. Now, I mentioned FM. You don't have to do this layer. You can do this layer, though, even in combination with FM. But how I might use FM, a lot of words, LFO on it. FM often gets you those crazy, like aggressive, more growly sounds. So once you've grabbed a shape you like, drew in an LFO, tweaked the filter, you're ready to get some effects going. I lied because I didn't like the FM. What I really liked was this right here. So now we're ready. Okay, effects, the first obvious thing, always multi-band these bases. Attack them and release that makes it fat. I'll turn the release down a bit just so it gets a bit louder and more slammed. 
Distortion is always nice to get it even beefier. But there's something interesting about this distortion. There's a number of modes to choose from here. And down sample you'll find is where you get that robot-y vocal character, especially if we decrease this a little. That is the sauce. As some would say, not me though, obviously. But a bit of stereo would be nice so we can have this chorus creeping in. Mix. And if you want even more mix, um, I mean stereo, you can go back. Have some unison voices on that top voice, just gives it that high-end air and finesse. Then maybe an EQ to boost up this high end a bit, if it wasn't enough. But the icing on the cake that is our wub is we can use this LFO to add more movement to anything. So let's start off with this distortion, it'll just kind of boof at the top. Really nice. We can put it on the mix too if you want to get it even cleaner sounding, as well as we can go down to this EQ and tweak this gain to kind of brighten up only at the peaks. And that's great. As for other effects, reverb, I don't know about that. A bit of a phaser wouldn't hurt, especially if you freeze it, make it mono. Could do that nice uh, harmonic character. As well as the flanger can get you to bring your nets with the same principle. If you're really into that, even like mess with the center, whoa man. And delay, a nice trick with delay, seconds. You hear this in rhythm, it adds a nice layer of tonality, you can turn the mix down. It's almost like a pseudo kind of reverb, just adds a little interesting slappy layer. But you don't have to do all that. You can do whatever you want, keep it as simple or complex. This is all about crafting the wub your heart truly longs for. And for that dirt monkey glide effect, just turn up the glide, always glide legato, and then it glides. So that was a quick crash course in Wubology. Now, how did I make all these little presets? For this first kind of call bass, if we open Vital, you'll see a lot of stuff in common. So we have these basic shapes selected. It's really just a matter of selecting shapes that reflect the sound you might like. But our filter is in here. Where'd that go? Don't worry, it's right under the effects with a different shaped LFO. This one, I kept it a bit snappier for that downbeat. You know me. And of course, compressor, chorus for some stereo, distortion for the beef, and we're good. Now this lovely whistly bass here. This is very similar to our original. I did end up using some slightly different wavetables and a different shape here, but you'll see a lot in common. Something to keep in mind is you can tweak these individual levels to get some more subtlety in your sounds. A lot of us, especially dubstep sound designers, have never messed with these levels before. We don't even know what they do at this point. I mean, besides LFOs, you know, we just don't tweak them so precisely like that. And of course, I decided for distortion wobble and this delay, I took advantage of that cool slapback delay effect and the rest should look familiar to you. Something to note though is post-processing. Should have mentioned that, but OTTs, saturators, saturators, I, I'm a... I got a list about my like That's like the guy from Looney Tunes or something. But anyways, that will give you the fatness. You'll see on all these, I just have a different combination of each. And sometimes a bass can take more of them without sounding yucky, like it's too much, sometimes less. It's really just a matter of balancing that and turning down your amount and up your time if it's sounding too messy. Now for my favorite wub, this really cool Halloween weird wonky wub. This, I decided to get a sine wave as the basis, a bit of FM movement. I also had some level movement though, you know, I felt like I wanted some more clean movement besides just the filter, it makes a slight difference. But this down sample is really giving it its character. Pretty basic wub without it, but with it, wow, this is now a robot, it's actually speaking to me, what is it saying? Another whistly boy right here. Let's see what's going on inside. Similar stuff, although I had some slightly creative layering here, if you can call it that. Without it, pretty basic, sine wavy, harmonic series FM. 
but I wanted that extra bit of fatness, so I layered a square wave. I'm buying the beefiest of all basic shapes. And classic LFO shape, classic filtering, classic high end boost, absolute. Another wub. Let's go in. Whenever you hear these hollow type of wubs, it's usually going to be some type of sine wave, FM together, maybe some harmonics going on, but boom, FM. Or you can just layer it directly on if you're feeling a little different. You want to just stick out and be different. But also note, 24 decibel, right? Gives it that slightly cleaner character. And with these hollow wubs, a lot of the time they come off less loud than others. So I boosted it into a limiter as a treat. Now, because I was getting bored of wubs, I made this more sustainy. But... At its root, it's still a wub. You really can't escape it at this point. And the only difference is beyond the effects and normal stuff, I changed this LFO shape. So instead of wubbing like, I kept it a bit more sustained. You know, it's just opening, kind of sticking around. And on this mix, I let a bit of the high end in. I was feeling risky, letting some peek through. And that just gives it a fuller character throughout, but maintaining that kind of resonant squelch that we love to hear. Also, you notice a bit of a vibrato effect on this, very subtly. That's coming from this LFO on voice transpose. Now, how you can set that up is just drag this LFO to anything. doesn't matter because we want to go in the matrix. So it's here and select global. And we can do like voice transpose or voice tune. How about voice tune? I think you can get more precise. And the problem is it sounds like it's changing key a little. So if we turn on bipolar, now it's swinging both sides. So it kind of meets in the middle sounds in key. And this LFO is going real quick. So I can just do that with seconds instead of the tempo. Yeah. Get some nice precise control over how fast you want your wiggle to be. Now for a real yucky one. You might think I did some witchcraft on this one. I didn't. Not this time. But Glork Glunk did. Because I used one of his wavetables. You know, I broke my own rules. I decided to use this Glork Tables one. It's not default and vital, but it is free if you look up Glork Glunk's website. I'll put that in the description if you're really interested. But yeah, just wavetable automation, filter opening, all with this LFO, and I'll get into these effects. But before the effects, this LFO one, you'll notice I got funky with the shape. So don't hesitate to do that. Classic distortion, a uh, bit of stereo, but this phaser, with that center moving, just really dials in that like harmonic roundness of it, if you can call it that. And this delay trick, but to spice it up even more, you'd expect it like this. But I like to expect the unexpected, so I put it on ping pong. Now it's stereo and even crazier if you thought that was even possible. But I add one thing that isn't the basis, and that is this little guitar key hit. And I use some Carpless Strong synthesis, basically using this... Um, combs, flange filters to imitate a real instrument. And I'll show you how to do that. So with our initialized preset, we have a, okay, not the coolest thing ever, but it could be worse. But we don't want that, we want white noise. Because white noise is a nice, full, atonal sound, which is great to feed into our flange here. So let's just get our flange, let's feed our noise through it. And already it's sounding kind of interesting. We can turn up this key track and that'll make it so track the keys we can hit chords with it. But it's sounding way too noisy and gross. To clean it up and to get some more kind of resonance of a sound through it, let's take this envelope too, pluck it good and put it on this level and really turn that down so it's just the tiniest impulse. And let's turn this resonance up so it shines through. From there, you can tweak the timbre of this filter, changing the blend, a brighter or kind of dimmer, more midi sound, right? You can change this cutoff. Also a brighter sound, but with a bit different effect. 
but we're not limited to one comb. Let's uh, get a second one here, or flange or whatever. Low high flange, and let's feed our sampler through it. The resonance up, key track. So now we have two, and we can tweak this cutoff maybe. And what I ended up settling on were these parameters. Feel free to copy them. Two low plus flanges with this blend here, which I messed up. Cut off there, blah, blah, blah. Effects though, what's going on in the effects to clean it up? And that is a few things. So compressor, multiband compression, makes it bright and beautiful, louder. But it still has that noisy high end, which is easy to take out with this EQ on high pass filter or what is it like high cut low pass okay with a bit of a boost here wouldn't hurt to help just brighten up fill out the sound it's nice bit of chorus did not hurt anyone yet and reverb makes it sound more real because real instruments don't exist in a vacuum at least not where technology is in its current state and you can get a lot of different results get some different sounding instruments through just tweaking these settings, messing with these different filters. It's a really crazy thing to mess with. Besides the sound design, what is the secret to this Dirt Monkey style arrangement? And one thing very characteristic of this sound is if we go in this MIDI, you'll see a bunch of notes. What does that mean? What's special about these notes though is the scale. So this step right here is particular to the harmonic minor scale, right? If it wasn't a harmonics minor, it would be... You see. You know, it sounds much more straight, more serious, versus you bring in that harmonic minor, it sounds all whimsical, like a good time for all. For more on that, just look up a harmonic minor scale. Have fun with that. But for the rest of the arrangement, you'll notice some very strong, clear calm response. Big call, big question, and then huge answer. And this pattern just repeats with a bit of a little fluttery uh, swing variation in these bases here. And of course, the same response, little turnaround at the end. Classic stuff. But what's important to note is if you have a really solid riff on its own, you can just switch up the sound design, have a ton of fun with it and you'll get away with it. It'll still be easy to follow and a whole vibe as some kids would say, who knows. But yeah, that's about that. If you really like these drum samples, I sell drums on my website if you wanna get some packs. There's free ones too, but this is my self-plugging section. Check out the site, check out the Patreon if you want these presets, like the video, like, comment, subscribe. And if you want to join um, a Discord, a online community of producers just like you and me who like weird bass, that's in the description. All that's in the description, and I don't know what else to say. You can also get one-on-one -on -one lessons with me on the website if you're really into that, and pre-save my song, and live your life, and be a happy guy generally. Try your best. If you can't, that's also okay, but I still love you, and I especially love you for watching this video and making cool music. Peace out, guys. Okay, I'm still here. I